What's up everybody, this is Jackson Fuller and this is the Star News Varsity Weekly Rundown where I just kind of take you through what happened in the previous week of high school sports in the Wilmington area and we take a look at what's coming down the road and a couple games that I'm really looking forward to. And uh, this, is, this was a really busy week of uh, local high school sports because we're trying, we're finally starting to get into the meat of the Mid-Eastern Conference um, and the you know sports outside of football. And then football, of course, we had our first conference games of the year. So let's start in football. Fascinating week in the area. Laney at uh, Topsoul was the game that I covered Friday night, and Laney pulled off a 26-21 victory behind senior quarterback Jordan Cole, who played great for the Buccaneers. The defense made one final stand. They couldn't stop Gavin Ellis all game. That guy is one of the best receivers in the area, and uh, rightfully so. He's been racking up yardage. I think he had almost 200 receiving yards, but when it mattered most, Laney got the one stop they needed to get off the field and get the victory. And the Buccaneers, after starting over and three in the non-conference with a young team is 1-0 in the Mid-Eastern play and look the MEC is wide open we're going to get into it in a little bit later but hey every win is important this year because I I think honestly there's a good chance that every team in the Mid-Eastern Conference finishes with a loss this year and that of course not hasn't happened in a, a couple years with Hoggard running the table but it's very very tight in the Mid-Eastern Conference this year and that brings me to the Vikings, who struggled in a 10-9 victory over South Brunswick. A blocked extra point was the difference between the two teams Friday night. And uh, historically, that's a game the past few years. Hoggard has absolutely had its way with the Cougars. Not Friday night. South Brunswick put up a great fight behind Roman Dillgard, Keyshawn Johnson with a long uh, receiving touchdown, I believe. And the Vikings continue to struggle throwing the football. And it sounds like South Brunswick loaded the box, said, hey, throw it on us if you can. Of course, Gabe Johnson did get his first touchdown of the season. And that was ended up being the winning touchdown with the extra point. And so Hoggard, 10-9 and nine, uh, 10-9 win. Hoggard now 2-2 two and two on the year, 1-0 and oh in the conference. Two ugly wins, but two wins. And for the Vikings, they're going to take wins as any way they can until they start getting some guys back and start getting healthy again. And look, this year they're a very young and inexperienced team at a lot of positions. So Hoggard, of course, they're not the Vikings of the past two years, but they're still Hoggard. They still have one of the best defenses in the area. And they still have to be considered conference championship contenders as long as they have that defense. Uh, the other two Mid-Eastern games were favorites taking care of business. New Hanover 35-6 over North Brunswick. I actually thought that game would be a little bit closer, but the Wildcats did ran the ball really well against them, and I think that's something you're going to see from Dylan Dimmick is, you know, I think early on in the year he wanted to get Chase Nixon some confidence up, and they threw the ball around a little bit more, and Chase Nixon did a fine job. But now in the Mid-Eastern Conference, you got three terrific running backs, a pretty talented offensive line, run the football. And then West Brunswick, 21-2 winners over Ashley. Um, Trey Bell, two long touchdowns. He looks to be the best offensive weapon West Brunswick has, and every week it feels like he gets at least one long touchdown. So, um, But only 21 points. That Ashley defense looks like it's actually a pretty good front, uh, unit this year. Uh, let's move on to some of the other sports. Volleyball, Hogger 3, Ashley 0 on Monday night. One of the most impressive sweeps you'll find in the area this year because those two teams are supremely talented, but Hogger took it right to them. Martin Main Rangel was the star for Hogger. I think she led the way with 14 kills, but the Viking strength is their depth this season. Ayla Johnson, Olivia Britt, Gracie Sistrunk, four girls can all get kills no matter what. If they're on the floor, you have to be wary of them, and Tara Sandman does an excellent job running the offense. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about both those teams later on in this video. Let's move to boys soccer where it was a fascinating week starting Tuesday with Laney beating Hoggard 3-1. And then West Brunswick upsetting Laney 2-1 on Thursday. Hoggard beat Ashley on Thursday 1-0. What does that mean? Well, Laney, um, one of the more talented teams in the area, now has two losses in the Mid-Eastern Conference. That's a, a bad loss to West Brunswick. Congrats to the Trojans. I know the Buccaneers had some injuries in that game, but if, but that's a loss that you usually can't have if you want to win the Mid-Eastern Conference title. Um, Hoggard won nothing over Ashley. So now Ashley and Hoggard both have one loss in the MEC, and New Hanover is sitting there in first place with zero losses, but the Wildcats have only played one of their Wilmington rivals, whereas everyone else has played two. So... Looking ahead, it's going to be a tight race in boys' soccer. And uh, girls' tennis, New Hanover 7, Hoggard 2 on Tuesday. That's a huge win for the Wildcats there. They've essentially clinched themselves a conference championship for the second year in a row. And uh, I think it's their first time sweeping Hoggard in two matches across the same season since 2013. 
New Hanover is legit. Peyton Philemon is a freshman at number one, and that pushes Mary Davis Thompson, a junior, who was New Hanover's number one last year, down to number two, and it affects the whole lineup. I mean, you look at New Hanover this year with Peyton and Mary Davis at one and two, are they going to lose at one or two at any point in the season until maybe the East Regional Final or the state championship? I don't think so. They, they're they a serious state championship contender. If I had to single out one team that I think probably has the best shot at winning a state championship right now, it's New Hanover Girls Tennis. And then really quickly, cross country, Caitlin Obremski from Topsville, a freshman, uh, another freshman girl who's having a great season. She won the Mid-Eastern Conference race on Thursday, then turned around and won the bow run up in Greenville on Saturday. She is a dynamic runner and looks uh, poised to be the conference champion this season, but I know Paxton Chitty over at Ashley will like to have a say about that when we get to the MEC race. Uh, coming down this week, let's start at volleyball. Hoggard at Ashley. Those two teams are going to play for the second time in an eight-day stretch. Um, you know, the first game was postponed due to Hurricane Dorian, so they played last Monday. It was makeup date. Quick turnaround. Now Ashley gets its shot for revenge at home. Um, really interested to see how that game goes because I think the Screaming Eagles were a little surprised at just how talented Hoggard was from, from all across its lineup. And the Vikings were so motivated for that game. Well, that motivation is going to be matched by Ashley this time because if you lose this game, you're essentially giving Hoggard that MEC Conference Championship, which Ashley has had its grip, its grip on for the past two years. So a huge game for uh, both those two Mideastern teams. Boys soccer, like I mentioned, New Hanover hadn't played a, had only played one Wilmington school, and that was Laney in a 3-2 overtime victory. Well, now they're going to get their shot at Ashley this week. Um, that's a huge one. I think that that matches Tuesday. Um, New Hanover, a win there would be big for them, and then they'd have Hoggard the following week. But New Hanover right now in the driver's seat, of course, a lot can change with all these uh, Wilmington City matchups. And, hey, teams like West Brunswick and North Brunswick, they're capable of pulling off an upset this year. Cape Fear Academy soccer at Coastal Christian. Coastal Christian, a one nothing winner in those two teams' first matchup this year. And again, this is another game where it's essentially, it feels like it could be for a conference championship. Coastal Christian still has to play the talented Fayetteville Academy twice this year. But this is a huge game. Um, Cape Fear Academy defending state champions. They, uh, you know, struggled to create much offense against Coastal Christian. I think this game is going to be a little bit more higher scoring. And Football Friday. Whew. West Brunswick at Laney, Topsail at New Hanover. Those are the two best games in the area this week. I really don't I don't even know where I'm going to go yet. I need to sit down with Owen Hassel, our sports editor, and discuss where he thinks we should go. Um, West Brunswick and Laney are both 1-0 in the league. Uh, we kind of expected me to go to Topsail at New Hanover, but then Laney pulled off a slight upset over the, over the Pirates. So um, those two games are going to be really fascinating to see. You know, the expectation from early in the season, I think, would be West Brunswick and New Hanover would win those games and be 2-0. and But this league looks so even. If Topsail beats New Hanover and Laney beats West Brunswick, I wouldn't be too surprised. If Topsail were to beat New Hanover, they're right back in that MEC Conference Championship race. You know, I don't think Lane, I, you know, Laney's, I think Laney is a great team this year, and I think they have an opportunity to win the conference championship. It would surprise me if Laney would run the table. So Topsail, with that one loss to Laney, they're still in it. Um, West Brunswick at Laney, I think. That should be a defensive struggle. Topsail at New Hanover should be an offensive firepower, uh, a show of offensive firepower. The other two games in the Mid-Eastern are Ashley at Hoggard and North Brunswick at South Brunswick. Happy for the Cougars finally getting a home game this year after starting out on the road for so long because that turf field wasn't ready. It looks beautiful. It's ready for football. And uh, that's it, guys. I appreciate you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys for following along and uh, always uh, checking out our coverage here at StarNewsVarsity.com. Uh, as always, Facebook.com slash Star News Varsity, Twitter slash Star News Varsity. And uh, this was a long video, but we had a lot to talk about, an absolutely full slate, and the games are just going to get more and more important from here on out. So thanks again for watching. Everybody have a great Sunday and a great week.